Twelve ten on WGN in Chicago. Nick DeGilio here. Nick at night is the uh, program, and uh, I am uh, thrilled uh, tonight because I have a very special guest who will be coming up uh, in in a matter of moments. Paula, I'm beside myself. Yeah, well, you didn't tell me, so this is I didn't be tell a you. Surprise. I didn't tell you. I don't believe so. I've been talking about it for a while. Uh, John Chris Felusi, who is the creator of, in my opinion, the greatest animated show that has ever existed, Ren and Stimpy, uh, is going to be joining us live. And uh, as you know, the show has returned to what is now called Spike TV. For a while, it was supposed to be Spike TV, and it wasn't because Spike Lee went a little loopy, you know, and it was the new TNN. Right. For and, men. Yeah. The network for men. Although I think I know a lot of women who love Ren and Stimpy, so I, I, I don't. It, it's the funniest thing in the world, and uh, so it debuted uh, a couple months ago on uh, on TNN on or the Spike TV on Thursday nights, and uh, and uh, has just made me happy, 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 joy, 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 joy. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm joined. I'm going to be joined here by the creator John Kay, who I'm just really thrilled to talk to. Um This is a, this is really I'm very excited about this, and let's bring John to the show, John. Hey Nick, how you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? Pretty good. Good. I gotta tell you, I love you. I absolutely think you're a genius, dude. I just think you're great. Gotta tell you. Well, I'm blushing, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Uh, let let me let me ask you a couple of questions. Five people who listen to my show are big fans of the show, and I really appreciate you coming on. I really do. Um, where did you know? I I think I know this story, but maybe a lot of people don't. Where did Ren and Stimpy come from? What are their uh, Origins. I know that the the show originally wasn't going to be just dedicated to Ren and Stimpy, was it? That wasn't your first pitch, was it? Um, well, I don't know. That's kind of a long story, but <laughs> Ren and Stimpy were just individual doodles that I used to do. They weren't even related to each other, mm-hmm. uh, and they weren't meant to really be much. One was just a retarded cat, and the other one was a psychotic little chihuahua. Right. But a friend of mine that I was working with, his name is Joel Fainer, he suggested that I put the two characters together. Okay. So uh, I thought, hey, that's a good idea. Yeah. And, uh, over the years, I sort of developed it into a show and took it around all the networks to try and sell it. Now you started doodling, you say. So have you? Uh, were you influenced by what cartoons were you influenced by when you when you were younger? I'm assuming you were influenced by cartoons. I would imagine. What were your, some of your favorites? Well, there's millions of them. I was influenced by all the cartoons from the 30s to the 60s. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, my favorites are Bob Clampett's cartoons. Yeah. Looney Tunes. Yeah. And I uh, love Fleischer cartoons. Mm-hmm. Of course, Look, Chuck, Chuck Jones and Tex Avery. Yeah, but lots of comic strips and comic books and do you, do, and all kinds of things. Did uh, now are you looking forward to? Uh, have you seen the uh, the trailers for this new Looney Tunes movie, the Joe Dante thing? Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's talk about something else. Okay. <laughs> let's talk about real Looney Tunes. <laughs> so, what are your opinion of some of the uh, the current state of animation? It's pretty sad, isn't it, John? Well, to I mean, tell you the truth, I don't pay that much attention to it. Uh-huh. There's a few cartoons that have some really nice art direction on them, like some of those Cartoon Network cartoons. Mm-hmm. The ones that Gandy Tartakovsky does, like Samurai Jack. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a great... Samurai Jack is great. It's beautiful. Is it, is it, is it because... I mean, you know, you had this, uh, this, you know, sort of strenuous, to say the least, relationship with Nickelodeon uh, after, after uh, Ren and Stimpy went over to, to Nickelodeon. Uh, what what happened there? Like, did, were they coming down on you because they did, they wanted you to work faster and they didn't want to spend money on the episodes? Is that what happened there? No, not exactly. No, it was just uh, because the show was so different from what anybody had ever done on television. Mm-hmm. And it's on a you know it's on a kids network and stuff like that. And they honestly they wanted us to push it as far as possible. But you know when you ask me to push something as far as possible. <laughs> Maybe you want to pull it back a bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it was just kind of scary for them mm-hmm. to put that on a kids network. That's yeah. why eventually they said, you know, the hell with putting it on Nickelodeon. Why don't we just do it all that on and put it on TNN mm-hmm. and, and let where it... you don't have to censor it so much. Right, right. So what has the response been to the new episodes, John? Have fans gotten to uh, have fans? Uh, been, have you heard feedback from people on, on, on some of the new episodes? Well, the only direct feedback I get is from the cartoon websites, and it's kind of hard to tell whether that represents the whole audience mm-hmm. or are, not. Are people freaked out? Well, some of the people on the uh, internet sites are. Yeah, <laughs> I don't like to, the gay jokes. Well, them. I got to tell you, John, the first one back when they were living in the spittoon and in, uh-huh. the, in the guy's mouth, I was a little freaked out. I loved it, but I got to tell you, I was a little freaked out. And I'm a huge, huge fan. And uh, 
And I love, uh, you know, I love all the envelope pushing stuff. I mean, uh, uh, I was a little freaked out, but I do have to tell you this: Ren needs help. Ren seeks help. Is quite possibly one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Uh, and that, was that was that an older script or was that newer? Yeah, the first three stories were scripts from ten years ago. Holy cow! Onward and upward was a uh, that's the first one we did this year. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was in direct response to thousands of of uh, letters that I got from the fans telling me to just do just go crazy with the gross stuff. People telling me that they love gross jokes. <laughs> do a whole cartoon with nothing but joke grosser. So I did it. Yes, you and did. And it made some people really mad. Yeah. <laughs> Even though that's what they all asked me to do. Right. <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and then the and the uh, the uh, Ren seeks help. That was an older episode. That was an older script too. Yeah. God, that was. Really... Of course, we embellished them and we had a lot of new jokes and stuff like that. But that was a script from yeah ten years ago. And, and when did you animate these uh, for TNN? Were they? Were well, they... we animated them this year. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, how how many people work on the show, John? Well, it's probably about, well, it, you know, if you count, let's just do it studio by studio. There's mm-hmm. a few studios that work on it. There's Spumco in L.A. Right. There's probably about 20 people there. Yeah. And then there's Spumco in Ottawa, Canada. Mm-hmm. And there's probably about 40 people there. Then there's Carbuncle Cartoons in, in uh, Vancouver, who do a lot of the animation. Mm-hmm. That's Bob Jakes' company. Mm-hmm. And, um... I'm not exactly sure how many people they which, have there, but I guess it's about 15. And then, of course, there's the Koreans, which there's probably another 150 there. Yeah, and uh, uh, so how much of the uh, how much of the work do you actually do, John? I mean, you supervise the whole deal, I would imagine, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have the drawings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I write most of the stories, and mm-hmm. then... Um, uh, but everybody contributes gags all along the way at, you know, at every stage. Right. So let me ask you: How are you working on? It's ha- now. Ren and Stimpy hasn't been on the last few Fridays or the last few Thursdays. Uh, what's been going on? We made it. <laughs> we were just talking about how you know. Let's take the show off of Nickelodeon and put it on on CNN, and yeah. we won't have to censor it. Yeah. Well, You're we're fo- censoring one. Oh, you got to be kidding me! No. Nah, well, it's not because CNN wants to censor it. Yeah. I'm not even really sure what the whole story is, but it. Uh, it's a cartoon called Naked Beach, beach Frenzy, and it's about um, <laughs> Ren and Stimpy go to the beach. Yeah. And Stimpy's really proud of Ren. Well, gee, Ren, it's so great to see that you love the fresh air and the outdoors. I didn't know you were into health and, and, and you know, uh, and good, clean, wholesome fun. And he's like, yeah, yeah, wholesome. And then we see Ren's point of view, what he, what he thinks is wholesome fun, and it's all these girls in their thongs running around on the beach. <laughs> and, of course, they get naked. Of course. And, well, we, so, thought, we all thought we could do, but... Yeah. They said no, huh? And it's well, women. It's not like not the CNN said no. They love. Yeah, it. yeah. But they have affiliates, and they have. Yeah. A, a well, you people. know, everyone's kind of freaked out over this episode. Yeah. So we're trying to figure out how to how to do a version for ten o'clock that is somewhat cut. Yeah. Apples out and stuff like that, and yeah. then maybe show it later. Well, can't they blur I'm, it out? I mean, on Stripperella, they blur out the uh, you know the topless stuff. Yeah. Well, that, I think that's what, part of what we're planning to do. Yeah. Okay. Because. More extreme stuff than there's more. There's even more. Yeah, I would imagine so. It's all kind of like it's not X-rated or anything. It's, yeah, it's just good, clean, <laughs> pretty fun. Good, clean, crazy fun. <laughs> John Chris Luzzi is my guest, uh, the creator of Ren and Stimpy. Remember, we got some fans who uh, have to who want to ask you a question. Is that cool, John? Yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Cool. Here is uh, Mark. Hey, Mark. Greetings from Cleveland. From Cleveland. I understand that it's it's your city's fault that we had a blackout. They blame everything on Cleveland, Mark. Well, I had nothing to do with it. I know you didn't. Okay. John Griffelusi is on the line. Go ahead. Yeah, John, I have two questions. Actually, not about Brandon Stimpy. Hope you don't mind. Okay. Hi, Mark. Um, okay, uh, first, uh, the thing is, um, I've seen your name on the, the old Heathcliff series. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of a fan, mostly because of the Cleo character. I'm wondering exactly what you did in that series. And the second question is... About the Ripping Friends. I read a while back that there was going to be an action figure line from Playmates Toys, but that never came out. What happened? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> don't, you don't want to tick John off, Mark. Well, I'm, no, I, I'll answer the question. Okay, so the first one is about Heathcliff. What did you do on that? Uh, Heathcliff, all I did was do the, uh, I designed the incidental characters. Mm-hmm. Not any of the main characters, not the Cadillac Cats, not the, not Heathcliff. Obviously, George Gately designed Heathcliff and all the characters. Um just, you know, the characters in the background, characters that played minor roles in the show. That was my first job as a designer, so. Okay. That's all I did on that show. And then was, what about the Ripping Friends uh, action figures or whatever? Well, Ripping Friends only lasted one se- season, so that's not enough to push toys yet. Although we have a pickup from both Cartoon Network and Teletoon in Canada 
Unfortunately, they together cannot come up with enough money for us to actually produce the, the series, so we have to find a third partner mm. in order to raise the money. So we've got scripts ready, and you know we're ready to go on it. Yeah, there won't be any toys until we actually get it. And not well, episodes well, on the air. Well, good luck with that. By the way, why did you change voices on, uh, I forget the character's name, but on one of the... Craig? Yeah. Well, the, the, the first guy that did Craig, uh, Harvey Atkins, uh-huh. um, he, he's a really good actor, but he's kind of, uh, he's a little bit older, and, uh, I tend to really work out, uh, my actors. Uh-huh. And I was afraid I was gonna get my heart attack. <laughs> so, uh, I just went for a, a younger guy. And uh, I kept Harvey on doing a lot of other voices, a lot of villains and stuff like that. Ah, okay. Thanks, Mark. Okay, good Take luck, care. John. Bye. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, now when you when you left Ren and Stimpy, uh, well, what's what's the story? Did they did they can you at at, at Nickelodeon or did you quit? <laughs> Do we have to talk about all that stuff uh, again? Okay. Just Twelve agree. years of that. Yeah. It's all patched up, and you know we get along great with TNN. Okay. And, you know no, we were all at fault at what happened uh, the first time around. I was just too extreme. It's a kids' network. Okay. And uh, you know things were bound to happen with with a show that was that extreme. Right. But right. Honestly, no other network would have would have stuck their necks out that far and even put the show on the air. I tried to sell it to every network. They all turned it down. Yeah. Thinking that I was insane. <laughs> show like that. So they were pretty brave. To put it on. The first time I saw uh, Ren and Stimpy was actually at a uh, an animation uh, an animation festival here in Chicago, and it was uh, it was uh, Big House Blues. Yeah. Uh, and it was part of a you know a ninety minute animation festival as you probably know. And I saw it in December of nineteen ninety. I, I, I specifically remember this because it was a pretty bad animation fest. A lot of the a lot of the other work was pretty weak, and Big House Blues was the last thing. It was the last piece of the fest. And I'm sitting there, and, and uh, all of a sudden it comes on the screen, and I'm losing my mind. I'm laughing my head off. I mean, the backgrounds were so funny. It was so beautifully animated. It was so insane. It was so imaginative that I immediately grabbed my press notes, and I'm looking to see, God, who's responsible for this, you know? And I noticed that it says, uh, you know, it has your name, and, and it's part of Nickelodeon. So I spent the better part of the next year, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, John, looking in the TV guide. To see when when Ren Hoek and Stimpy were going to be on the air, and it, it wasn't until I had to I had to go all the way till August of ninety one, before <laughs> before I saw it. Now, uh, um, was that part of a? Did you do a lot of these? A lot of these? Did you? Was that the first uh, short that you did for that was shown at like some of these animated festivals, or did you do a lot of stuff before that? No, that was the that was the uh, first and only one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was playing in theaters and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, your 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 uh, your relationship with Ralph Bakshi. Uh, did that start working on Mighty Mouse? No, actually, I uh, worked with Ralph a couple of times for only a month at a time, mm-hmm. at about 1981 and then 82 again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you started working on Mighty Mouse, and that's where it's at. Now, this, the, the Ralph Bakshi episode that was on TNN uh, was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. I absolutely loved it, the, uh, the sequel to Fire Dogs. Uh-huh. Uh Now was that also a ten year old? That was also a ten year old script. Yep. Even the even the even the honeymooners bit that was that was written ten years ago. Well, the honeymooners bit uh, is something that Ralph and I developed as a an idea for a live action show. Yeah. And uh, it didn't really fit in the Ren and Stimpy thing. It was it, what really happened was we weren't we weren't ready in time with the episode, so we only had half of it ready. <laughs> yeah. So we needed to fill some time. And Ralph Ralph's been uh, um, working at uh, my studio for a while, uh, pitching new projects that we might do together. Mm-hmm. He just offered to do some filler, some live action filler, and he, he pulled out this old thing that we wrote and he, he adapted it on the spot, you know, in a couple of days and just came up with something to kind of set up who Ralph was for one thing yeah, and, and link it into the cartoon. Yeah, it's really, it was really... It was the last great. minute thought, really. <laughs> it was great, though. It was really great. 1224 on WGN. Jacques Lucy is our guest. Uh, the creator of Ren and Stimpy. So, uh, are there are there uh, uh, ways that people can uh, can uh, uh, contact uh, 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 Spike TV in support of the show, or, uh, or or anything like that? Is there are there ways that people can uh, can get a hold of uh, can get a hold of you and support or, or get feedback for the show? Um, I don't know. They have a website. I'm, the Spike I'm like TV. What, uh, whether they have email there, mm-hmm. they must, I guess. But. Yeah. I'm not really sure. I mean, you can always write to them. Yeah. Has the has the response? Have the have uh, uh, how, are the, so TNN is happy with the with the results, obviously. Uh, um, and some, but some of the affiliates are getting a little bit freaked out. But that's about it. Other than that, are you st- are you working on a regular schedule now? I mean, the one that you're just finishing up. Are you work? Do you have another one in in the 
Are you, are you getting ready to do another one after uh, the Naked Beach? Well, we're taking a bit of a break right now. We have three more episodes that are in production, mm -hmm. but they're all over half an hour long. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things that I think is missing from the new series is all the old commercials, the fake commercials we did and the bumpers and things. Right, right. So uh, I'm thinking of uh, maybe doing three hour-long specials and not having to cut these stories because the, the, the last three stories are pretty intense and funny. Yeah. So we just want to, we've written a whole bunch of the bumpers and everything, but we just didn't have a big enough crew to produce that and the episodes mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're kind of just talking with TNN now about what do we do with these last few episodes, and we want to get all, all the bumpers in. Yeah, that'd be great to, to see some of the new commercials and things like that. Yeah, uh, we saw yeah. one called My Little Ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, and is that a product? Yeah, it's a product. It's a little girl's product. If they all give you the picture, you can get the first... Uh, uh, inkling of it. Okay. It's, it starts off in live action. It's got two little girls sitting down. They're playing with something, uh, but their hands are below the, the TV screen, so you wonder what they're playing with. Mm -hmm. One of them says, um, uh, what color is your, uh, my, my little ass is pink. What color is your little ass, uh, Katie? She says, well, my little ass is purple. And then Dad walks in and goes, hey, 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 what kind of talk is that in a Christian household? And they look up and they go, silly, Daddy, we're playing with our little action figures. And they pull up Two uh, little, uh, you know, plastic mules, a purple and pink mule. Oh, they're mules. And we're playing with my little ass. And Dad says, oh, that's okay then. And just then a priest steps up from behind the curtains and says, well, let me be the first to bless your little arses, lassie. And he pulls out his uh, holy water and he starts spraying it on the my little asses. And all of a sudden, the, act, the real plastic asses turn into um, animation. Mm -hmm. And they start to fly. Mm -hmm. And the priest freaks out. <laughs> the wheat's cut out. And the whole picture turns to animation, and the girls start crying. Oh. And then we go into the theme song. We see rainbows and everything, and, and there's a wonderful theme song that goes like this. There's a rainbow over Ash Canyon. It's a double-barreled one at that, where everyone always is happy, and nobody ever gets fat. My little ass, sweet little ass. And then there's a whole bunch of... Um, sequel commercials to it. That's awesome. <laughs> some for the shows and some for the villains and stuff. I'm assuming that that he is uh he's a rooster. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I that's what I thought. I'm assuming that that's what that was. Yeah. Hey John, can we put you on hold for a second? Sure. All right, hang on a second. There's Jack <laughs> from From uh Ren and Stimpy. Okay, the creator of Ren and Stimpy. We're gonna talk we gotta take a break here. We gotta do a couple of commercials and we're gonna take a break. Uh, uh and uh, I'm uh I want to get a one more, uh, one more or two more uh, story ideas from him that are going to be coming up on the on the uh, later ish on the later uh, um, episodes of Ren and Stimpy. Okay, we'll take a break and we'll be back right after this. Hello, boys and girls. This is your old pal Stinky Wizzlety. This is a song about a whale. No. This is a song about being happy. That's right. It's the happy, happy, joy, joy song. Happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy, joy. That's right. I don't think you're happy enough. No. That's right. 12.36 on WGN. Oh, teach your grandmother to suck eggs. That's right. It's 12.36 <laughs> on WGN. Nick DiGiulio here. Nick at Night is the show. And uh, we're talking to John Kay, the creator of Ren and Stimpy. Uh, John, I, I appreciate the, the, the exclusive previews that you've given me for uh, for some of the stuff coming up on TNN. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I'm really happy about that. we got a couple of fans here who want to talk to you, and then we'll let you go because I know it's late. And uh, you got uh, some work to do on the uh, on some of the episodes. Uh, here's Adam. Hi, Adam. Hey. Hi. Okay, my first question is, are you going to do another comic book series? Uh, not in the near future. Mm. Okay. All right. Second question is, are you going to bring back Powder Toast Man? Powder oh, yeah, we have a, in fact, we, we, uh, we, we have a commercial. Powder Toast Man is um, now um, producing Powder Toast Man Rolling Tobacco. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's good. He's moved out. Is, is Gary Owen doing the voice? Hopefully. Oh, good. I haven't talked to him yet, but uh, I'll ask him. <laughs> That's great. Adam, thanks, man. Okay, thanks. See ya. Bye. Uh, where did Powder Toast Man come from? Uh, uh, where, what, what part of your mind came up with Powder Toast Man, John? Well, I didn't come up with him first. I came up with Powder Toast. Okay. I was just thinking up 
strange uh, breakfast products to do commercials for. Right. So I thought of, well, powdered toast might be a cool product. Mm -hmm. And then I remembered all these great cereal commercials from when I was a kid um, where Superman sold some cereal. I don't remember which cereal it was, but... Mm -hmm. The kids would be getting, would be feeling listless and stuff in the morning. Right. And because they didn't have the right nutrition or whatever, and then Superman would overhear them. He'd be like listening outside the window, <laughs> keeping Tom, and he'd go, whoosh, come in the window and save the kids, you know. Hey kids, you need this cereal here, chock full of sugar, that'll give you energy. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, well, if we're gonna sell a breakfast cereal, we gotta have some kind of superhero to help promote it, why not Powdered Toast Man? Mm hmm. So it was and, just there, and there he was. Revolution. <laughs> All right, here's uh, Brett. Hey, Brett. Hey. Hi. You're on the air. Um, hi, John. This is amazing. Hey, um, how you doing? I'm Zip from uh, Motmus, the forum, and uh, I just wanted to ask you, um, what advice can you offer for those of us who want to be um, big shot, amazing animators like you? <laughs> John, you got any advice for, for from a big shot animator, John K? Uh, <laughs> uh. I don't know. There's a million different ways to get there. Mm. Yeah. Uh, my preference is to learn to draw really well and then work in the business for a few years for other people who know what they're doing so you can learn the ropes. Mm. Mm, okay. All right. Now, are you drawing, Brad? Or you, do you have a, you have a ambition to be an animator? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've done some little uh, flash animations mm. and... Uh, you think uh, you think uh, John with the with the internet that there's more opportunity for animators now than there was like 15 years ago? Well, I would have said yes a, a few years ago until the internet crashed. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I suppose if you can put something together on your own, you might get discovered or something. Mm -hmm. But I still believe that you should work for somebody else first and not expect to start at the top because nobody's going to want to work for you <laughs> if you don't know what you're doing. So work for somebody else for a while. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Brett. Thanks, man. Thank you. Take care. Uh, all right, John. What was it like? Uh, was that, uh, what was it? Uh, what was that like? It was. First of all, it's a really beautiful video. Now, did Bjork come to you? Um, no. Um, I, and uh, I mentioned that I liked Bjork and I liked her video, and I had heard that she that Bjork liked Ren and Stimpy. So Laurel said, "Well, I bet you I can get you into her next concert." Yeah. Meet her backstage. And yeah. Did. So. Uh, I met her backstage after after a concert, and um, she told me she really loved Brandon Stimpy, and I told her I liked her, and uh, that she was kind of shy. Mm -hmm. So to break the ice, I, I drew a picture of her dancing with Jimmy the Retarded Boy. Right. And she grabbed it and clutched it to her chest and then giggled. <laughs> so I said, uh, you want to make a video or what? <laughs> she said, Okay. <laughs> And so we did, and the result is is this song. It's a it's a it's really great. It's really great. Uh, you know, you wish every you wish every collaboration could be like that, huh, John? Yeah, that would. Yeah, be. the creative part of it was really easy. I couldn't believe it. Like, I asked her, you know, what she would want in the video, and she said, "Well, you're the director." Mm. She she said, "I want to do the song I Miss You," and she explained to me what it meant to her. Mm -hmm. She said, "But don't worry too much about that. Don't litter, you know, don't try to take it too literally. Just mm -hmm. Do what it." feels to you so i said well, well, well tell you what why don't i do a storyboard and then uh send it to you and then you can make whatever changes you want mm. so i did a board in about a week and then sent it to her and, and i got ready i called her up and i was ready to change anything i expected that she wouldn't like certain things but she just said oh that's great let's do it wow so every shot that was in that board ended up in the film wow that's great yeah. that really is cool no creative changes Wow, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really beautiful video. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, John, you know, it's been a real, it's been a real pleasure talking to you, man. I, I, I you're one of my heroes. I got to tell you. I think, uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, when Ren and Stimpy came along, it was, um, it was a, it was a badly needed jolt in, uh, in animation because so many animated shows were just crap, you know. And you know what I mean. Uh, uh, there was no life to it, no imagination. You know, a lot of the stuff was just so sloppily done, and, and it was just great to see. Uh, you come along, and, and I think single-handedly, uh, you know, you know, I mean, you, so, you know, obviously the impact that Ren and Stimpy has made not only on, on, on animation is, is still to this day. You, I mean, you, I'm, I'm sure you see it in the things that that are on, don't you? I mean, the, the insane influence that uh, that that your cartoon has had on other things. Yeah, well, people tell me. Yeah. Well, no, it's true. 
It's true, John. It is absolutely true. So, uh, okay, so the next episode you're working on, uh, uh, it looks like you're going to have it. I mean, you're still, you're still working on it. It's, it. And, again, it's called Naked Beach. What's it called, Naked, Be- Naked Beach? Naked Beach Frenzy. Naked Beach Frenzy, where Ren, uh, what does Ren say again? He says, uh, uh, hell, what, what is it? Stimpy says to him, uh, I'm glad that you're all, you know, what, what, you like health, and what does he say? Good, clean fun? Yeah, I didn't know that you like to go out, you know, to have outdoor activities and right. enjoy the sunshine and, and good, clean, wholesome fun. Right. And, and says, yeah, yeah. Awesome. And then we see him watching this uh, girl in a tiny thong bouncing a beach ball down the uh, down the beach, and, and he just oh man, okay, all right. Owner jokes after that. There you go. That's it. All right. Well, John, it's uh, it's uh, it's great to have you on, and uh, we'll all be watching it. Everybody, watch TNN. Is it? Uh, do you know when this one's? Gonna, is it going to air next Thursday? Well, it's supposed to be on next Thursday. It's supposed to be on next Thursday, <laughs> yeah. but we'll see. Uh, and it's, it's, it's the same slot, it's the same time slot. They're not gonna move you around, are they? They're, it'll be right before Stripperella, right? It's I think so. It's supposed to be on at 10 o'clock. I 10 mean, o'clock. Sometimes change the schedule, so I can't say for sure, but it, yeah, it should be on at 10 o'clock. Okay, and, uh, and we've got some new commercials to look forward to, new supporting characters, and hopefully some hour-long, uh, episodes, cause... So that'll uh, be, that'll be a little bit later. We're pretty right. much, we only did six episodes first. Yeah. For the first pickup. Yeah. And the Naked Beach Friends is the last of those. Okay. But then we have three more in the works that I'm hoping to turn into our specials, and they'll be full of the bumpers and everything. That's great, man. Well, John, it's a, it's a, it was a real pleasure talking to you. And, uh, you know, maybe the closer we get to, uh, to some of the other uh, airings, maybe you can come on again and talk to some of our fans. Because uh, I, got, I got a whole bunch of fans here who have been emailing me and everything. And Now, is there a, is there, do you have a website? I know Spumco had a website for a while. Well, we don't have it up right now because we haven't had any time to refresh it or anything. Yeah. One of these days we might put it back up. Okay. Is there? Is there? Uh, is there? I know there's one. I know there's. Uh, there's. There's a bunch of fan websites out there for Ren and Stimpy. Yeah. There's one called um, the Loyal Order of Stupids. Oh, that's great. And uh, you can ask. Uh, there's a special section there where you can ask stupid questions to my dad. Uh huh. Because he's always over at the studio and he knows everything that's going on and he can like tell you what a rotten kid I was. That's in fa- <laughs> that, that, that's in fact how we got you on the show. Oh, okay. We went through your dad, and uh, he was kind enough to help us out. And it's and and John, it's a real pleasure. So it's the Royal Order of the Stupids is the is the website. Royal Order of Stupids. Right, and uh, you can check that out too. And uh, lots of fan sites out there. John, uh, I really I, I support the show wholeheartedly, and just stay 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 crazy and keep doing the craziest stuff you can think of. Well, thank God, Nick. All right, John. There's <laughs> John. Later. All right, take care. There's John K, uh, a certified uh, genius, and uh, there's uh, there's a little craziness in the genius, and he's 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 certainly that. And it's uh, Ren and Stimpy Thursday nights on Spike TV or TNN, whatever you prefer to call it. Thursday nights, nine o'clock, and uh, and uh, and you'll be seeing some new episodes coming up soon. And we got a, an exclusive preview from the creator, John K. Boy, that was fun. He's crazy. He's nuts, that guy. Huh? He's great. Oh, he's great. He's crazy in a good way, and he's Canadian, so he's completely crazy.